short for Thermo Fisher Scientific, and so what that is is kind of like the General Electric of biotechnology companies. What Thermo Fisher is is a uh, sort of a joint union between Fisher Scientific, and what they did before was they were like a, a catalog for biotech type services. So if you wanted to order biotech applications, instrumentations, these kinds of things, you would go through their catalog and you could order anything under the sun. Then what happened is that they merged uh, with another company, Thermo Electron, and when they did that, they became basically the largest bioscience company in the world. And so what they do is they have their hands in literally everything, the company as a whole. My particular division that I work for, next to Tesla, we all like to boast the fact that we're next door to Tesla. Uh, okay. But the building that I work in uh, primarily does immunodiagnostics, that's what it's called. And so basically what that means is that you, from immunodiagnostics, you have immune, like for immune system, and diagnostics for diagnose. So what they do is they use uh, antibodies, which is something that comes from the immune system, to make drug test kits. And so what they're doing is they're manufacturing these drug test kits. And anytime an athlete gets checked for a certain type of chemical, they're probably going to be using Thermo Fisher goods. Anytime a doctor is checking for what's in your blood for a certain medication, they're probably going to be using one of Thermo Fisher's tests. And so I'm somewhere in that mix. Well, yeah, there's a lot of other companies that do immunodiagnostic kits, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, one other big company that does it is Abbott Labs. And the reason there is is that usually one company offers only a certain portfolio of things that they test for. So there's all kinds of different drugs that doctors prescribe and stuff. And so you want to find a, a test kit that is going to work for that particular drug. Whatever it is that the doctor is administering or whatever steroid, even drug of abuse. So there's all kinds of companies that, that come up that offer different types of test kits for different types of things. It just so happens that the big ones like Thermo Fisher and Abbott, they tend to buy up the little companies. So the little companies spring up out of nowhere and then they're, they're devoting their resources to developing these kits. And then once they have a viable kit, they just get bought out and get part of the big system. Well, I compare it to like a car manufacturing plant, right? There's a lot of things that have to happen before you build a car, as it were. You got to get a bunch of guys in a lab that are figuring out the idea, proof of concept, and then you go through an R&D phase, a research phase. Then once you're done with that research phase, then you start adapting what you did in the lab to a manufacturing phase. In other words, you got to prove that what you did in the lab can be scaled up and then put out to the market in the form of a kit. And so that's basically how these biotech companies are working, and my company as well. When I first got into the biotech labs, I was amazed at how ancient the technology seemed. It seemed like we were using a lot of equipment literally from the 1970s. You know, ancient chart recorders spitting out paper and things like this. Very large, blocky types of equipment that have casing that looks yellowed with age, literally yellowed with age. And so a lot of this stuff like has been developed, the technology for biotechnology, a lot of it came in the 1970s. And it's been done for a long, long time. Like what I do with drug test kits involves hybridomas. And essentially what that is, is they're using uh, mouse cancer cells that are fused with uh, mouse spleen cells to produce a certain antibody to a particular chemical. And you're shooting up mice with drugs is what happens. You rip out the spleen and you fuse it with a cancer cell and then you grow that cell. Then you have to have a way to purify out the antibody. So this basic technology is 30 years old. Now what's changed is computers. Everybody knows now that we didn't have tablets like the size of our hand back in the 90s. I mean computing power is amazingly increased and that computing power now is being used to deal with all the information generated by the old-fashioned technology. So the truth is, is that the actual biotech stuff, a lot of it that you see in companies every day, like the kind of company I work, is not that new. 
But what is new is the application of, you could say, computer science to that. If anything, what's famous about scientists and chemists is they're not as good generally at dealing with other people. You take all these people that are brilliant, you put them in one place, and then they have to learn how to get along with each other. And so that's really what it is like day to day. And, and how are things going to advance in the future? Well, probably like what it looks like is you're just going to get um, equipment that is more and more automated. That's the wave of the future. So before, a lot of the things that you had to do by hand, uh, these techniques, now machines are going to be doing this. And that really applies again to everything else. I mean, you go to the supermarket and now you have automatic checkers. So it really is no different in that industry than anything else. Um, so without being disappointed, it's nowhere near as cool and exotic as people might think.